possibly not drawing her attention to herself. He then approached the bathroom door and shot at it four times without thinking. He then returned to the bedroom to look for Reba, but he can't find her. He then says that he looked around the bedroom, looked around the curtains, and realized in that moment she was in that bathroom. So he put on his legs. At this point, he's putting his legs on calling out to Reva, and he tries to kick the door down, this is important, and then he goes and finds a cricket bat, where he does successfully break down the door, and he finds her in a pool of blood. So imagine yourself in this scenario. I'm a woman, however, I don't really know how a, a man, I don't really know what a man's thought process would be in this, um, but me, if I know anyone's in the house, I'm finding my partner. You're there. Okay. We have to do the deal with this now. But I need to know where they are. But, but apparently, he doesn't have that thought process. But anyway, um, let me know your thought process on this scenario, what you would do. But only if it's true. And the fact that if he really thought it wasn't Reva behind that door. Let's continue. So, in his version of the story, um, he says she's bleeding out, and he calls his friend, not the ambulance, and then he takes Reva and carries her from the bathroom down the stairs and leaves a trail of blood around his home. Um, then once a doctor arrives, he says to them, I shot her. I thought she was a burglar. He then sat there praying while they checked her out beside him. So that's his side of the story, but when the police arrived, they actually arrested Oscar quite quickly. They didn't really wait to check things out, since this was not their first time dealing with him. And an officer in an interview stated that they can confirm that there have been previous incidents in Oscar's home that were domestic violence related. And um, of course she wouldn't go into the details. But if you're an officer and you're like, oh, Oscar's house, a shooting, and then you know to arrest him immediately, red flags everywhere, but good on the officers. So the police made it very clear quite quickly where they stood and that they thought he knew who was behind that door. And something interesting to note that although he was an amazing racer, he also had a passion firearms and guns. He tweeted pictures of him at the shooting ranges when he'd be taking a break from training, saying how much he loved it. It was, it was a passion of his. And although the world really saw him as this soft-hearted fighter, this inspiration, everyone who was close to him actually said he had an incredibly short and bad temper that he was often severely paranoid about his own safety. And I would be too, especially since the crime rates where he lives seem insanely high. He actually even tweeted about it himself once, saying, nothing like getting home to hear the washing machine on and thinking it was an intruder to get you into full-on combat recon mode into the pantry. So, is his story of him reacting the way he did that far-fetched then? I don't know. So, police are at his home. They say a woman inside has died from gunshot wounds. He's arrested. At this point, he's claiming it is a total accident. On the 15th, he's denying that um, this was a murder. Prosecutor Nell says he's being charged for this. And Nell says that he will argue that it was not only premeditated, that it was premeditated. And he's then granted bail on the 27th of February. Time passes on, and there are parts of the story that don't really fit into the timeline anywhere. Um, so, you know, things might be thrown around, but whatever. Um, the judge didn't think it necessary to hold Oscar. He was allowed to travel to practice, um, but as months pass, it's the 19th of August now, prosecutors in South Africa submit their formal indictment that Oscar must return to court. 
are saying there were screams. Just something I thought I'd say because I don't think I mentioned that later. Just more flaws in his story. So Oscar said that when he went up to get the fans, he'd seen her legs at the end of the bed. And that when he'd returned, I guess that must have been when she slipped out, right? And um, it was dark and he himself was making noise so he wouldn't hear her. Prosecution really couldn't get past why he'd think that someone in his master bathroom was an intruder and not Riva. And it seemed to them that it was far fetched and he wouldn't have looked up right in front of him to see whether or not if his girlfriend was there before reaching for his gun and being like an intruder. But anyway, and also reaching for his gun before his legs too. Now remember, he put his legs on after he shot through the door, after he looked around the room. Then he put his legs on and tried to hit the door down with his legs. But that was actually untrue. The prosecution said the marks on the door suggested that based on the height, he was kicking with his stumps and not his prosthetics because they were so low. The defense then had him take off his legs and stand without them to show how he would have been too unbalanced to kick the door. But he was walking around the room without them carrying fans. I don't know. The prosecution then stated that even if unaware after the initial shot, he would have been alerted after that it was a woman. So, since she would have made some kind of noise, a scream, the neighbors noted that she had been yelling. Um, they believe that when they're unsure 
strong.